Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick video to show you how to set up server side filtering for the select widget. This video is going to be broken down into three main parts. First, we'll take a look at how to set up the select widget. I'll show you how to bind data to the select widget and render a list dropdown in the select widget. Then, we'll actually take a look at how to set up server side filtering for the select widget. I'll show you how to do that. And lastly, I'll show you how to pass in default values for the select widget that are not already rendered in the list that's going to be very helpful if you have server side filtering set up for the select widget are you excited for this video i'm sure you are my name is confident and i'm a developer advocate at appsmith without any delay let's get started all right so right here i have a blank application and the first thing i'm going to do is go search for a select widget so let's go bring in a select widget and here we have a nice select widget on the canvas. So taking a look at the widget, this requires an array of label and values. So we need to provide this in the data we would be supplying to the select widget. So the next thing we need to do is connect the application to a data source, pull in that data and use it to build the options for the select widget. So let's go do exactly that. I'm going to be using the keyboard shortcuts for this. So I'm going to click on Command Shift Plus or Control Shift Plus go create a new data source, all right? And we're going to be using the user's database that's available on AppSmith by default. So let's go ahead to create a new query. And for this query, we're going to call it the get users query. It's going to be a select query. And um, one small mod we would make to this template is we want to select just the ID and name from the user's table have it ordered by the ID and limit it to just 10 records. So I can run this and here we have a bunch of 10 users being returned. I can pull this up a bit for you to see. We have a couple of 10 users shown right here. So let's go back to actually build a select dropdown using that data. So for this, we need labels and values. Don't forget that. So let's go ahead to map over the data coming from the get users query and return the structure that has both labels and values. So this is going to be data.map. So for each user, we want to return an object that has a label, which will be the user's name and also a value, which will be the user's ID. And that's basically all we need to do. So taking a look at the select widget, we have options built using users coming from the get users query, which is really nice and simple. Let's actually take out the default value so that we have this looking more nice and clean. And we have just options of users showing up right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to build a server side filter for the select widget. Taking a look at the select widget, we actually have a filter built in, which is this input you have right here. And we can type in it to search for items in the select widget. But the only issue right now is that whenever we try to search for something, say for example, Jack, it's only going to return items already existing in the list. If that item is not in the list, for example, man, it's going to say no results found. So what we need to do is set up server-side filtering for the select widget and then have it perform the search on the database and have those results brought back to build the options based on the search query. All right, so let's do that. Um, heading to the configuration of the select widget, we need to turn on server-side filtering. So I'm just going to turn this on and having server-side filtering turned on actually unlocks a new action called on filter updates. So we have the on filter of the action. We can set this to execute the get users query. And when that's executed, let's head back to the get users query. I'm using the keyboard shortcuts here again. This is command or control P. Let's head back to the get users query. We'll need to modify this a bit to include the search query from the filter on the select widget. So let's add a where filter. So this is going to be where. So let's search by name is like um, something imputed from the filter. So this is going to come from the select one, which is the name of the select widget. And we have a dot filter text, which is the actual text entered in by the user. So we can turn off prepared statement. And right now you can see this is empty because we have no input in the filter. But going back and trying to 
search for man for example so let's search for man you can see now we have entries being returned by performing a search on the database so even though we actually did not have these options rendered initially on the select widget we we're able to perform a server-side search which hits the database pulls out the results and rebuilds new options using the select widget so this is how easy it is to build a server-side filter for the select widget the last thing i'm going to do is show you how to set a default value to an item not currently rendered in the list so i'm going to quickly do that by pulling one of these items in the list we actually have a lot of items so probably i should go search for something else like ink for example this has fewer results all right so i can go copy this and paste that into the default value so let's say i want keen to be the default value what i need to do is pass an object that has uh, a label and value that equals to the property or the item I want rendered on the select widget. So taking a look at this, we have passed a label and also a value, which is Kim's name and user ID. And that is used to build the default value for the select widget. Now, if we go to clear the filter text, for example, and have the select widget initialize to its default state without having any filter, you can see that we still have Kin showing up. That's because we've both passed the information required to build the Kin option to be the default selected value for the select widget. So to recap, to set a value to be the default value, if it is not rendered in the list, what you need to do is go ahead to pass in a label and also a value. And that's just going to be used to build the default option as you can see right here. All right, so this has been a cool video on building a server-side filter for the select widget. If you'd love to learn more about the select widget, we made a video right here that explains the details of the select widget and everything you can do with the select widget. So please go check out this video we made right here. If you also love to protect your applications against SQL injections, because like we did in the application right now, we actually wrote some SQL query, so to protect your applications against SQL injections, you need to use prepared statements. And to learn how to do that, we made a video right here that shows you how to use prepared statements to protect your applications against SQL injection and actually boost up your security. All right, that'll be all for today's video. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.